Hello, hello, hello. Wolfpack809 here with Olaf the Bard. I'm kind of here. <laughs> He's uh, not mentally here, I guess. I'm not hot anymore. That's good news. My moves are kind of sweaty, you know? Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. That's why I'm sitting like I am. <laughs> Ever like, do that just to get. <laughs> 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 you, know, you just gotta slap your uh, move up and down. Sometimes you just gotta slap your tits. <laughs> you gotta slap your tits so you can get air to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think that was something that happened a while ago. <laughs> About a year ago. Oh my! Wow. Slap some tits. Got air to Slapping some tits a year yeah. ago. <laughs> it, was some, it was something that happened in the summer. Uh, FBI mm. during a break. Sure. Okay. When I was looking over my notes for a quiz or something. Oh my. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen this hentai before. Oh. <laughs> hey, you. Keep this in mind. What? A, a girl from my class <laughs> suddenly came to my I'm seat. just waiting for there to be male characters. Like, every character except for Kiyoshi has been a chick. I know. <laughs> Kicking my desk as she yelled at me. She was unexpectedly strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she's one of them fake women. Got it. Oh, uh, yeah. The notes and stationery on my desk scattering about. She was like a leader in our class, a part of the largest group. Having almost never spoken to her, I had no memory of her making her mad. Unable to get mad, I was merely bewildered. Then Jimeno showed up, and with her face downcast, picked up my stationery. Oh, the, the chick just says, remember this, kicks your fucking thing, and then walks away? Okay. I like, sorry, it's my fault. Your fault? Yeah, I stole her Starbucks. <laughs> a girl from that group invited me to round one this Sunday, but I turned her down. What is round one? Yeah, you know. Swear to God, I do it for fun. I <laughs> just a dead man walking with a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> Hell yes. That was the day Jimeno and I had made plans to go to the movies. Indeed. Indeed. Indubitably. I was able to m more or less understand what had happened. Like, when she asked me why, I told her I already had plans with you. Uh, of course I hesitated to tell her that, you know, but she was persistent. But you could have gone. There's a Starbucks at the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Probably, actually. You know, it's 2020. 2020, man. Just fucking put the Starbucks in the movie theaters. Hell yeah. That girl's group was big. If there was an event or something, basically the whole class went along with them. But it wasn't strictly a good thing. Their group pride was as great as their group mentality. The girl that had come over a few minutes earlier was particularly striking. <laughs> like I'd go, Mayu. You should know you take priority. Starbucks. But if you turn them down, they won't invite you anymore, will they? Fuck them. They're cunts. <laughs> if their pride was really that high, then that's how it would be. I had heard that. Except for that girl as a leader. And... Hold up. I had heard that. Except for that girl as a leader and two others, people were regularly being brought in and thrown out of the group. Okay. Understandable. <clears throat> it wasn't something I cared about. But, yeah. Take two. I'm having issues. Yeah, English is hard, man. <laughs> it w wasn't something I cared to hear about, but the bad things girls who had been kicked out said regularly found their way into my ears. <sighs> yeah, fuck. Like, yeah, I won't be invited anymore, for sure. For sure. Why? But that means... It means more Starbucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it as a disadvantage for Hermeno, who loved going to events. Like she could have had an advantage getting elected to executive com committees for things like the culture festival or the sports festival, or getting votes for a program or something. It may sound like a discussion of politics, but ever since reaching junior high, things have had this kind of mysterious flow to them. Like, anyway, I was the one who turned it down, 
It's not some form of discrimination. I just didn't like them from the start. Also, she's black. Damn. Damn. <laughs> you can't say that. Damn. <laughs> As she readily declared this, there wasn't a hint of doubt in Himeno's face. And for sure, she and was black. I believe Himeno was a little bit racist. <laughs> this kind of thing happened several more times until now. Like, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Cheerful and fun to be with. Beautiful Jimeno, okay, was also popular with our classmates. Since I was always with her, there were plenty of instances of jealousy. But from what I saw, Jimeno didn't discriminate against anyone or try to butter them up. Just like with the girl from that group. Holy rap god. I often asked Himeno. Himeno, why are you friends with me? Like, because you buy me Starbucks. <laughs> Is that really something you need to ask? More importantly, it's not like I'm being your friend as some kind of favor. I'm your friend because it's fun. And because you give me Starbucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Every time I asked, Himeno laughed at <laughs> I really love the smile she gave me at those times. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. That's hot. <laughs> Once again, I've entered a passageway behind the tanks. I thought it would get me to the Fish of the World booth, but I was probably led astray while I was out of it. Yeah, somehow I ended up behind actual tanks, and now I'm in Nazi Germany. Low-key, I was thinking the same thing. Like, um... <laughs> no, but, like, honestly, this sounds like it could come out of a war novel mm -hmm. until you got to the Fish of the World booth. Maybe it's because I've been watching uh, Girls Into Panzer. Oh. But, yeah, I, th I thought tanks. Weird show, by the way. Schoolgirls and tanks. So, kind of like that game Sidearms for Reason played? No, no, no. That game was Schoolgirls are tanks this is schoolgirls in tanks oh and like so. there's a pink tank and they all just look fucking weird it's it's yeah it's a thing so the game side Ops for reason played was not about girls in tanks no no, no. it was about girls who were tanks okay see the game side Ops for reason played mm -hmm. it was a really really cool game you, yeah. you should check out side Ops for reason we doing a we doing a stick? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, we've gotten that. Remember low. to subscribe to Speedy and join the KY Army. <laughs> KY Army, <laughs> <laughs> where we frequently get into the clown car. <laughs> anyway, I should get going. If another something borrows Mari's form and attacks me like earlier, I don't know if I can defend myself against it. Safe no longer means anything. So I should speed through the passageway. Um, upon looking at the map, I see that there appears to be a room at the end of the passageway. That's how most passageways work, yes. Just as I expected, there are three doors before me. Oh, God. Go through the middle door. Wait. I have no choice but take them one by one. The first being... <sighs> Director's office. It's my vote. The reference room. <laughs> Information. And knowing is half the battle. Maybe this is some kind of reference room. The other half is extreme violence. <laughs> Since it's like a reference room, maybe I can get some information. Information. <laughs> As I think this, I push open the door to the reference room. I got me. After confirming that no strange phenomena are taking place, I step inside the room. Inside, there are massive amounts of books and files arranged on metal bookshelves. Looking at the spines of the books, they all appear to be technical in nature. Research data also appears to be mixed in. I've heard that aquariums are also Im implied to be facilities for research. Seeing this room has convinced me of that. I see. It is. It's not like there'd be any materials written about the strange things happening in this mansion aquarium, would there? Since this place is itself an abnormality, Having, having come to this conclusion, I notice a book near the entrance on deep-sea fish. Deep-sea fish? 
Fifty Shades of Fish. <laughs> One of the last words a girl <laughs> left for me. Fifty Shades of Fish. Strangely interested, I take the book into my hands. Oh. It seems there a tech there's a technology called nano bubble. What? An extremely small bubble, less than a micrometer. By suddenly compressing a micro bubble, a bubble less than 50 micrometers, a relatively stable purification process can be formed. Go on. It seems that due to the properties of vapors in the bubble, various effects can be expected. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your super bubble. <laughs> if ozone is sealed within these bubbles, water can be purified through a bacterial process. Oh, really? Since it's not using detergent or any other chemical substances, it seems to be good for the environment. Wow, hallelujah. <laughs> There's also an example of sealing nitrogen inside the bubble, so it dissolves down to a finite amount. Finite. Finite? Finite. Fi finite? Finite. What the fuck does that mean? It's the opposite of infinite. Why don't we just say an amount? I mean, you know. Preventing the oxidization oxidation of, of codfish codfish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they can be delivered to cities while still fresh. Wow, that's some super technology. Of particular note is that freshwater and saltwater fish using a similar composition in their bodily fluids apply the bubbles technique to balance the electrolytes in fresh water with their own bodily fluids as a means of coexistence. What does that even mean? Freshwater fish cannot live in water as a higher concentration than within their own bodies. Oh. And saltwater fish cannot live in water that has a lower concentration. Hmm. Furthermore, it seems that... <laughs> that explains why there are freshwater and saltwater fish. It's like, good lord. At least they said one thing that makes sense. It's like, good lord, shut the fuck up so we can move on. Like, you know, we're reading... Sorry, my sword pen fell. Sword pen... Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> Furthermore, it seems that microscopic bubbles can stimulate activity at the cellular level. There are cases of the bubbles being used to cure the KOI herpes virus. Koi herpes? For example. Koi get herpes? The deep sea fish booth at Manton Aquarium seems to have been set up with this technique. Okay, so basically science causes a lot more problems than it fixes. It's <laughs> the whole plot of this game, apparently. And then, and then Steins Gate is more like science solves problems. No, Steins Gate is more like woe is those who play God. Oh, <laughs> trust me, you'll see. Naturally, it would involve a cost incomparable to normal expenditures. Expenditures. What the fuck does that even mean? Uh, it's things that you expend on. You know, reading this shit makes me feel like I'm a fucking retard. Like I don't know. <laughs> You don't read enough. I don't see these words ever. Because <laughs> you don't read enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read. In other words, it would take more money. The obvious downside then would have to be pressure for funds. Er, my girl. I like how she basically just read an entire book and went, eh, this isn't the time for reading. I know, right? This isn't the time for reading. It's all very interesting, but it would be something better researched after I returned to the real Manton Aquarium with a minnow. I returned the Burke. The Burke. The Burke. I'm Asian. Bork. Bork. <laughs> I returned the Brook. I, I returned. Return. Oh, I returned the I returned Brook. The Brook. <laughs> I returned the book to its original spot ra, and ra, leave ra, the ra, reference ra, room behind. I have no choice but to take them only by one, one by one. The first being wow, the director's office. Even change that? Okay. Is the director's office. I mumble, but while looking up at the words written on the sign above <laughs> the, the door. The sign above just says director's office. <laughs> the door's appearance differs greatly from the doors of the storeroom and the reference room with red ornaments decorating it. Even if there had been no sign, I would I would have known this room belonged to someone important on first glance. The atmosphere from out here also seems to have a heavy air to it. It's as if I'm standing before the door of a school principal. If I don't go in and see, I really won't learn anything just staring in from out here. Opens the door, gets slapped in the face by a fish, and then you just hear somebody yell, Attention! <laughs> <laughs> 
The obvious truth is that I already possess the courage to go through with this. Keeping an eye out from, for any phenomena while coming through the door, I push on the heavy door. The door makes a scuffing sound on the floor as I open it. What the fuck? This dude's got a Kabutops? What is that? Kabutops. Ass bug. Yeah, and it's as big as that fucking bio laptop. Please excuse my intrusion. It's not as if anyone would be in here, but without thinking, the words came out. An elegant desk and chairs are situated at the center of the director's office, as you see. And bookshelves are along the walls mm, with a gap right here oh, in between. Someone's fired. The main wall, when looking from the entrance, is a giant tank made of translucent translucent acrylic material. No one can argue that this room isn't also one of the aquarium's displays. The room is perfectly in order, giving me a sense of who the director is from the way their desk is. More than just neurotic, they don't seem to have left even one speck of dust. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange, does there? Just as I met the just, bug, the bug just says, "Nah, I would have noticed." <laughs> <laughs> just as I mutter this, I notice a map on top of the desk in this neat and tidy room. Only the top of the desk appears to be a work in progress. This is, after moving aside a book that seems to be in use as a weight, I find a map of the aquarium. This one is different from the one I picked up back at the stage. The design seems older, and the publication date is from five years ago. Five years ago. It's not as if I can ignore that number. Five years ago. <laughs> it's what everything started for Manton Aquarium and for me. Five years ago. Inside the map, I discover one defining difference. Five years ago. The deep sea fish booth. Five years ago. That place that was closed down five years ago is five recorded ago. on this map. Could this be? Five years ago. It could be. It's <laughs> it seems that the deep sea fish booth was just after coming out of the tunnel. However, it's strange. I've been able, I've been to that area several times, but there's only a long wall. There's no trace of anything. It seems that when it was closed down, they filled in the wall. It wasn't like that from the start. Questions rise within me as I, I consider this. Why are we here? What's our purpose? What the Why fuck is that weird ass bug thing? Why are we still here? <laughs> Why are we still here? Just to suffer. <laughs> If where I am now is five years in the past, then I should be able to get to the deep sea fish booth. Huh, this line. Just a line of coke. <laughs> <laughs> As I repeatedly look over the map, I spot one red line. The line extends from the deep sea fish booth all the way up to a circle at the top of the map where there's nothing else. The staff passageway connects to the deep sea fish booth. My idea is seemingly confirmed, I nod without realizing it. The deep sea fish booth is the only place in the aquarium I haven't seen yet. Surely Manton Aquarium's secrets will be there. Hmm. Just a little further and I can finally reach it. This is... As I trace my finger along the map, I mentally position the booths in the aquarium on it. Come out of the tunnel tank and turn right, and the fish of the world booth should be there. Go in a straight line immediately after turn... This is a lot of information and I probably have to remember it. Sword pin. No, it doesn't go like that. I can't twist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Turn right. Come out of the tunnel tank and turn right. And the and the fish of the world booth should be there. Go in a straight line immediately. Okay, now do what? Go in a straight line immediately after turning left at the passageway behind that. Uh, <laughs> turn left, then straight. <laughs> then take another left. Uh huh. And there's the director's office. Oh wait. <laughs> so what I just wrote down, but in reverse. <laughs> Oh my god, that was the greatest fucking thing ever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god.
god. <laughs> In other words, if going straight through as the map says, this office is just past the tunnel tank, and between the tunnel tank and the director's office is situated the deep sea fish booth. So we didn't need to write it yet. <laughs> Doesn't appear so. It's just my knowledge of playing video games tells me you have to put in a sequence of some bullshit just to do the game. So, so then this room with the red circle is here. <laughs> the director's office is directly connected to the deep sea fish booth. Since there's nothing written in the map's blank spaces, save for the red circle, I think it's safe to say it's the room I'm in right now. I stop looking at the map and begin to glance around the room. There's nothing but bookshelves along the walls, even though there should be something leading up to Deep Sea Fish Booth. The tank. Looking at the tank, I mutter to myself, this is the end of this episode. Good, because I gotta fucking pee. Alright, well, we're done. Uh, quick load? Oh, save. Save. Quick save. Bye. Later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.